Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast, episode 213, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I am Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, your host for today's lovely sit down with the news. And we've got some fun news and maybe some, well, that didn't turn out quite as expected news. <laughs> But first, before we get into it, let's introduce our panel for today, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty well. I just wish I had that smooth radio hosting voice like you do, man. Oh, well, you know how it is. You know how it is. I, although I did appreciate you. I did appreciate you popping in to uh, just show a quick thumbs up support there for <laughs> State of the Realm. I got to host just it. Just long enough to make yeah. fun of you for a little while and then yeah, moved on. Just yeah. long enough to poke some fun at me on the XIV podcast from uh, Mr. Happy and Sly. <laughs> Uh, it was a good time, so check it out if you're an XIV fan or a Final Fantasy XIV fan. I say XIV like dating back to Game Breaker when we called the show XIV Reborn, but the game was 14. Oh well. Also on the line, not playing Final Fantasy, Zach Sharps. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Uh, I noticed that you didn't get the memo that we were going to wear all red. Um, yeah. So yeah. J Jason <laughs> followed suit. But yeah. apparently I should watch Skype closer. Rebel, maybe, a rebel without a cause. Or maybe you should include me in the conversations. <laughs> <laughs> next week, next week uh, we're going to be recording on the 16th, so I'll be right next to St. Patrick's Day, so we all got to wear green. I'm already oh, wearing easy. green. Got, that, got the memo? All right, all right, you ready? I'm already wearing green, so I'm uh, just celebrating early. Shut up, dog! Shut up! Shut up! The damn Shut dog! Up. Oh, <laughs> beagles, man, beagles. They hunt everything. They hunt everything. Speaking of hunting, let's get started with the news. <laughs> Segway that made no sense. All right. Uh, so, yeah, Wildstar, guys. We're going to talk some Wildstar. And not just a NCSoft's numbers have come out and uh, Wildstar is now in the other games column. If beagles hunt money, I mean, they might, they might need them. I mean. Uh, no shit. Uh, so Wildstar <laughs> dropped its Primal Matrix update uh, yesterday, I believe it was, the 8th. Uh, we're recording on the 9th, you're watching it on the 10th or later, so a day or two ago, uh, but based on if you're watching it immediately. Uh, and the Primal Matrix update, gang, was pretty, if you don't know, it was pretty endgame focus, right? I mean, it was progression for those people that have been at 50 for a while and have been doing other things. Uh, to sum it up very briefly... Uh, just so if you don't play Wildstar, you can still tag along with the conversation. Uh, think the sphere grid in like Final Fantasy X, Zach, I think might be a good way to, to describe it. Uh, where you have your different paths and you can unlock a whole node and then branch off into other nodes and pick some items in there. The whole idea being farming up the resources to do this over time and unlocking abilities and powers to make your character even stronger, right? We, we've seen this before in various incarnations, the end game additional progression. I mean, even World of Warcraft has popped into this ballpark now with its whole um, uh, artifact weapon or uh, legendary weapon upgrading system, all that fun stuff. So we're familiar with this type of thing. And a lot of fans of Wildstar going into this, Jason, and everything we had seen, were pretty happy with it. And, I mean, it, it kind of caters right to its player base. We're not picking up a whole lot of new players. So here's some content for the people that play and have stuck with us and are still with us, right? I mean, generally, going into this, it was a pretty positive... Uh, vibe coming from the hardcore Wildstar community. Yeah, it seemed that way. I mean, like I said, it's a familiar concept to people. You know, the one thing I was thinking of was how uh, Rift did this sort of thing too, didn't they? With their uh, additional primal attunement or something like that. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, planar yeah. attunements. And planar then, attunement, that's what it was and called. And then the yeah, attunements yeah. on top of that later, yeah. Yeah, I, I personally, I just kind of look at it as going, it's, you're still max level, but you're still going to get better. But you, you'll still be max level. We won't actually raise your level, but you're still better, but you're not actually... Anyway, but yeah, I mean, you know, people like it. it's more grinding, more stats, more vertical advance, but yeah, let's go. Well, and it wasn't just that. I mean, this was obviously the big feature in, in the update, Zach, but there were also uh, two new instances, Evil from the Ether and Cold, Ble uh, Cold Blood Citadel. They were also compatible with Prime difficulties, uh, and they had some other updates in there as well, but Primal Matrix by far was the, the big granddaddy piece being added. And I'm going to show a screenshot of this just so people can see what I'm talking about as you weigh in on your thoughts, Zach. Dip, damn it! Stop Skyping me! I'm recording. <sighs> that was not your Skype, viewers. That was mine. Go ahead, Zach. Why don't you chime in here while I get yeah. the picture up? 
Yeah, so as far as the update goes, it just seems like a lot of sort of end game stuff, as he mentions. And I and this will be good for player retention, but on the other hand, it's like, okay, well, player retention, I don't think is your guys' biggest issue right now. Like maybe maybe they've noticed some drop off of, you know, players leaving the game because there's not enough content to do. So I can understand it from that regard. But I think it's more of like getting people into your game. And I think the other thing that we're gonna probably mention will help with that, but I don't think it really fixes the game's flaws that a lot of people didn't like the game for. So, uh, Looking at the screenshot that you guys are, are seeing here, and now that I have things set up correctly, my co-host can actually see what I'm showing. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, you'll notice that at the very top of the screen, uh, you get a number of different resources, and obviously those numbers are huge because this is a dev screenshot. Uh, but those are the resources that are required to unlock each of these various colored nodes. Now, some of them you can farm up. They're they're considered common. Some of them are considered more rare uh, and may take a bit longer to farm up. But that's the general gist of it. And I think going into it, at least, people were pretty happy with that type of thing. Then Wildstar announced uh, just a few days ago that, hey, we're going to work something else into this, a little bonus, if you will. Uh, and, to Zach's point, maybe try and scoop back some players that left the game, or hell, even a brand new player. Um, get them back into the game by saying, if you log in for our Primal uh, Matrix update, we're going to give you a free character boost to level 50. Uh, which I thought, initially... You know, we've seen Terra do this, offer a free boost. I know way back in the day, Terra put it out there as, hey, we're going to test the ability to boost. So if you want a free character, so we'd want to be able to test this. Go in and create a character. What was it, Jason? You had to put a specific uh, underscore thing after your character's name. Yeah, something like that. And it only was like level 57 or something. Right, was and the they, so, yeah, they boosted it to just shy of the cap while they were testing. And we've seen other games give out these boosts for various things as well. But this one coming Even on... Even done it. Yeah, yeah. And coming on the heels of the update, I, I thought... You know, other games have done it. I'm just kind of like, okay, they're giving away a freebie. And generally, I go in and get my free level upgrade and then don't play the game, depending on what game it is. <laughs> but it almost smacked of desperation on on the Wild Star side. And I don't know why. I mean, they're not doing anything here, Zach, that they that other games haven't done before. But I think there's just such this this stigma over Wild Star that even when they do things that other games have done and are generally positive things for the community, there's almost that like grain of salt you take it with on well, everybody's been bitching about leveling and leveling alts and not being able to get people in the low-level dungeons, and so now they're just saying, all that stuff we created, if you want to come back here, just skip all of that shit. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the odd thing about just boost in general, is you always look at the fact that, okay, well, they created all this content, why are people so, you know, concerned about skipping it? Like, isn't that content supposed to be entertaining? and you know draw you into the game and so when you give a free level you know 50 boost or how whatever level boost it is in other games you sort of say okay all that content doesn't matter we don't care about you know easing you into the game here's a, a free character that's you know maxed out or whatever have fun ruining other people's experiences because <laughs> you don't know how to play your class yet and so i i definitely see why veterans are probably very jaded in that regard uh, because they're like, okay, well, now our groups are going to be filled with people who don't know how to play. This is not going to end well for us. But then on the other hand, it's like, okay, well, you kind of want the game to survive, right? Yeah, like they need to try I, I do. And do. I stuff. absolutely do. <laughs> yeah, they need to try and do stuff to ease people into the game. And maybe, yeah, that beginning stuff isn't as entertaining. So maybe the end game will draw more people in. So giving a, a free level 50 character is a good thing. They got to try something. I don't think it's really desperation. I think it's more of they just are trying to do different things to get a population that they think is sufficient into the game. And this is one step for them to try and do that. Yeah, but the, the feeling or the perception of desperation, Jason, wasn't just myself. I, lo I was looking at comments on, obviously, MMO Bomb, on other uh, gaming sites in general, on Wildstar forums, on Reddit, and they kind of shared the sentiment of this seems really nice to try and get new players in, but too little too late 
for that audience. Uh, combine it with some of their recent decisions on as far as amping up perks for being a subscriber, and there's just kind of this feeling of even with players that play Wildstar on a consistent basis, there seems to be this underlying current of, yeah, you cater to your subscribers really nice, but you're not really treating your free players very well, and that's a problem. I mean, I guess I don't think of it as any more desperate, like you said, than any of the other games that have done it. The maybe a weird thing about it was that it was only announced on Monday, I think, so two yeah. days before the <laughs> yeah. thing went live. And so you get the feeling almost like it was they had this whole. I mean, they've been working on this update probably for months, of course. And then just like last week, they were like, you know, our numbers were really crappy, so let's just let's throw a little fifty in there too, just toss that in. So that's maybe the sense I get from it. This has been announced like two, three weeks ago, or a month I probably ago, would not have gone there had it been launched. Uh, you know part of the announcement weeks ago you're absolutely yeah, right yeah exactly so that, that, that's the part that seems a little desperate to me like maybe they're looking at their quarterly numbers like oh we got to boost this before the end of march so yeah did, i can uh, definitely see that did either of you create one no i would have played revelation I have, I have no time for wildstar especially with horizon so. I, I did create mine uh, I did go in and create it. So I will give a couple of notes for those of you that are considering doing this. One, you have to act fast. This show is not going to be posted until the afternoon of the 10th. This promotion ends on the 12th of March. So you really only have, if you're watching this cast and it's brand new news to you and you want to take advantage of it, tab out and go do it now. Uh, even if you don't intend to play, no, no, keep watching right us. Now. Keep right. watching us. Come on, man. Right. <laughs> keep you this tap out. Watch us on one monitor. You know, do your thing. Do your thing. So you have to do it by March twelfth. Second, there's no redos. So be very careful. Make sure you're creating something that you know you've always wanted to create, but didn't want to go through the experience of leveling that particular alt, or or know what you want, or do some research first. Because once you create it, you're done. Here's a biggie. Here is a biggie for those of you that do play Wildstar. The level 50 unlock is character slot account specific. So, if you have all of your character slots already filled, you don't get it. You don't get it. There is no extra character slot or anything like that. At least as of the time of this recording... They have not made any changes to it, so yeah, if you're full on character slots, you're asked out on that on this one. It's not a boost; it's a level; it's a character creation screen item. You have to have an open character slot for it. Finally, and yeah, there's a couple weird things as soon as you go in. You are supplied with gear and things like that. However, the gear is not ruined, so if you are a Wild Star player. And you already have stuff, great. You just ruin that shit up and, and, and go. Uh, if not, it, there it comes with no money. No gold, no plat, nothing with this character boost. So you can't go buy the items that you would use to ruin. And I understand why they did this, right? Obviously, RMTs would create multiple accounts. Or hell, you know, I could sit there and create multiple accounts under multiple emails and just keep scraping the free hundred plat and pushing it all to one account i get why they did it but you start with zero uh so you're gonna have to go farm up the materials which involves maybe researching whether you want to rune up the i level 70 stuff they give you because you're gonna be replacing it with the 80 stuff pretty soon so there's some considerations that you're gonna want to take into account i hope i was able to help you with some of those particularly that it's account specific on the character creation screen you don't got a slot you ain't got one. It's it, One of your slots lights up and says, click here for a 50. Uh, for people unlike me that are infinitely more involved in the Wildstar com uh, community and not as casually playing as I am, this might not be being received as well as the initial hype leading into it might have led you to believe. Right, Jason? Yeah, somebody on Reddit just did a really long breakdown. I've only like barely scratched the surface of reading it, so I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm, but first, I want to go to his summary at the bottom. We'll start with that. It says this new update is extremely bad for the game. It greatly reduces the amount of viable content beyond farming dungeons, expeditions, and doing dailies. It creates complete imbalance between veteran and new players. It destroys interclass balance for competitive content like raids and PvP. It invalidates difficulty of content with a massive pay to progress faster power creep wall. And it comes loaded with bugs and exploits, but publicly known and withheld from the PTR testing. 
that's not a ringy endorsement. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he goes into extreme detail with a lot of math, talking about how it's the, the grind is just crazy, apparently crazy bad, something you can't get to as quickly as you want. What did he say here? That um, Let's see. Uh, uh, the, the general, yeah, the general gist of the math behind it was that somebody playing three or four hours a day and somebody playing two to three hours a week could mm-hmm. progress it through the power matrix at basically the same pace because right. their commitment to the game or their time in game really didn't knock down any barriers because it was just how often per day are you going to do your dailies? The dailies because the common materials while easy to farm up the rare ones are locked and by the way this is all account specific not character specific so you can't farm up on multiple characters and funnel it all into uh, the matrix for one particular character so uh, and the days ended up being in the like two to four hundreds you know it would take non-subscribers like 270 days to unlock everything in the matrix uh, provided they're doing their dailies the way they're supposed to uh, and it would take non-subscribers like 400 some days to do it and they broke down you know that you can bypass some of this with money you know, offset doing dailies with some real money or through credit exchange, some real type of money transaction. But even that, when they broke down the math, and this is as it applies right now, right? This is the type of thing that we could certainly see change over time. So if you're watching this a week from now and Carbine's already made changes, sorry, we're talking as it is right now. Uh, Yeah, you could use money to bypass some of those dailies but not even at a really hugely beneficial rate to want to do it versus how much you were actually spending in cash zach yeah i mean it's just it it seems like they kind of um made it into a mess um something that could have been pretty good turned into basically just a daily farming task oriented thing and that's sad to see you know additional progression past cap is always good um regardless of sort of how it's done unless it's done in a way that makes it so you have to just grind and grind and grind and grind um so i mean they could fix it but it's like guys i mean you guys stated that your game was hardcore 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 in advertising now you release something like this and it ends up being sort of a mess in terms of execution and now you have to go out and fix it but I mean, it's like, what what do they want to do with this game? Like, what's what's their vision? And I, I just never really seen it. It's like some of the comments. I, I don't know if they're on the Reddit or on the uh, another article that I read about that I talked about how they're making it more like modern-day WoW in that sense that it's just do stuff over and over to get rewards as opposed to any kind of challenge with it, so... Yeah, and yeah. it's the comments, ironically enough, uh, are really divided. There's, like, no middle ground on this one. There's people saying that this analysis doesn't matter. They're doing great things for the game, blah, 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 blah. And then the flip side of that is that this update is so fucked. Stop playing Wildstar because that's the only way that Carbine is going to see that they have pissed off their loyal player base. There's also a drawback with, uh, what is it, heroism, um, where it's, yeah, there, it's a long Reddit post. Uh, take a look at it if you're a Wildstar fan, because there are definite pros and cons, a lot of cons that I can see here just as a casual Wildstar fan. And if I was a little more hardcore, there there's some stuff in there, Jason, that would probably really, really piss me off as a player. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind doing stuff, doing a lot of stuff in an MMO, but having to do the exact same dailies, like every day, like I said, 270 days, I'd... I'd shoot myself in the head first before i had to before i had to do that to actually progress is it exactly what's funny is if you look back and they removed like all the rep grinding and stuff that you had to do for the raids to initially get attuned this is just a rep grind yeah really it's all it is is another rep grind put in except the rep is to farm materials instead i don't know wildstar fans there, there seems to be a split on this so if you're watching the show and you're a wildstar fan to me I'm lukewarm about this update, but I can I can appreciate that that's because I'm a more casual Wildstar player. Uh, this does there are things in this update that turn me off, though. To 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 be fair, things like there's a big section of leveling dungeons and th- and content now that is absolutely negated and was already tough to get groups for, uh, all the way up to including some raiding content. So. 
there's things that concern me, but I'm a ca more casual Wildstar player. I don't play it as as uh, fast and furious as I do something like Final Fantasy XIV. So let us know in the comments below where you stand on this. And uh, make sure you go and get your free 50. If you haven't played Wildstar in a long time, let us know if the free 50 got you back in. Put it in the comments below. All right, let's head over and do a little mini rapid fire round here. We got a couple news topics I just wanted to touch on quickly. First off, the Wargaming CEO came out and said, Hey guys, we were a little arrogant. <laughs> just a bit. And 2017 is going to be a renewed focus on World of Tanks. Jason, being our war correspondent, where the hell did all of this come <laughs> from? Like, I thought everything was fine in the world of land, but apparently it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, in the world of Warcraft land. This is a different one. Is war correspondent, do I get a helmet or like a press badge or something? <laughs> you you no? get the okay. Anderson Cooper hair. You're done. Oh, You're right, set. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically he said that uh, yeah, it, it, most of it goes back to the Rubicon update for World of Tanks, which came out about a year and a half ago. It was really, really unpopular with the fans. Point, they had to like roll it back. That's how bad it was. Uh, and as you said, you know, he felt like they could do anything because World of Tanks, you know, even in 2015, was just on top of the world, zipping right along. And yeah, they they got kind of smacked around for that. And he said that yeah, he felt like it was anything they could do, they could do no wrong. Uh, Victor himself, the CEO, said he was kind of getting a little too much into everything. So, you know, his new move just kind of stepped back a little bit. He's going to focus mostly on World of Tanks and kind of let the other two teams do their own thing. Now, I know we were talking a little bit, I think, uh, on High Low yesterday. You were like, you, you thought it sounded like they were just, he was just abandoning the other games. But I see it as more of a thing where he's allowing them to, like you said, to try to find their own niche, to not have to be exactly like World of Tanks, to do their own thing, have a little more independence within the company and... You know, I think that's a good thing. I think it allows them to innovate a bit more and not be tied down to any particular paradigm from the, the, the boss office. Zach, your thoughts? I mean, I, I did think that they were expanding a bit too quickly, but I didn't really think that it was necessarily a really bad thing, um, like this sort of portrays. But, I mean, if they if they feel they overextended a bit, I mean, that's completely, you know, good for them to realize as quickly as they did. That way they could sort of reel it back in and refocus their efforts on what made them big in the first place. Uh, it's kind of a brutally honest quote. I mean, the quote goes, uh, we were a little arrogant. Let's say three years ago we were thinking we know everything that our players need without talking intensively to them ourselves. It turned into... I wouldn't call it a disaster, but we hit the wall at some point. And that's right from uh, Wargaming CEO Victor Kisley. And I, I apologize if I mispronounce that uh, in any way, close shape, enough. or form. Yeah, it's, it's close. Kis, Kis, Kisley. Kisley. I think it's just like Kisley. 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 I mean, why? Oh, no, it's just it's two a, syllables, man. It's not an English <laughs> thing. So, uh, so yeah. I, Good for them. I mean, I hope it works out. Uh, it was an interview with Polygon to give full source credit there. And, but we've seen, I, I, I think we've seen Wargaming come out and say things like this before and then nothing change. Maybe not as direct as we were arrogant, but I remember years ago the whole thing with uh, some uh, other streamers and podcasters that we, uh, that we know, Jason. So uh, we'll have to see if it, it holds uh, any changes in store for the world of franchise on the bad side of things man gigantic uh motiga the company behind gigantic laid off 15 employees and while that number may not seem big obviously that is 15 families potentially impacted so our hearts go out to them and hope they find work soon but also in the context of the size of motiga anymore they only had 82 employees left, Jason. So this is just continuing not to look good for Gigantic when we thought, or when Motiga in particular, when we thought, hey, being picked up by per Perfect World Entertainment, this could really be a good thing for this company, getting them that game off of Windows 10 exclusive. It's a game people were looking forward to, but has taken so long that, that the shine is wearing off. That's definitely going to help getting away from just the Windows 10 platform. And here we are again, reporting on layoffs from Motiga yet again. Yeah, it is a little surprising. It's been just about a year since Perfect World uh, took up their publishing deal to help uh, help them get Gigantic out. 
I thought at that point they were stabilized. It had a couple of layoffs, a couple of really unpleasant things go on a few times. I interviewed their CEO and he was like, yeah, it was bad, but we managed to like, you know, get that deal and hire back a lot of the same people. Uh, but now it's like, yeah. I don't know where they go from here. That's the like, hard- obviously they're still going along. The game is still developing. It's still in uh, closed open beta, I think. Yeah, open beta, but it's still only for Windows 10 at the moment and Xbox. So, yep. and and that's the heartbreaker part of this. You know, they had plans to get it off of Windows 10, which damn, do it, do it right away. Yeah. You will have a, a nice little influx of players, and I know Perfect World wants to go that way too. Uh, but Zach, these were we're talking about people that were likely laid off, rehired, and now laid off again in most of these cases, back in when Motiga laid off almost all of its staff and then were able to bring them back on. Now these people, you know, less than a year later, are getting laid off again. That's that's a rough back and forth to put uh, employees and, and their families through. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the volatile nature of the video game industry, and it's sad that, uh, this happened so suddenly for them. But, I mean, that's just why I can't support anything on the Windows Store with money because it's so horrendously bad and it kills everything that it touches. And this is just another example of it. Gig- Gigantic is a fun game. I really enjoyed playing that with a group of my friends. And I, I you probably played at least 34 hours of it plus something like 40, somewhere around there. And they had the fundamentals down, and all they really needed to do is get it off the Windows Store. Because, I mean, if you just try to find the game in, on your computer, it's, like, buried under a bunch of system files. Yeah. And then if you try and, like, sweet effects it, because you want, you know, the, the colors to pop a bit more, oh, you can't do that because you don't even have permission to, you know, alter those files. Even if you actually give yourself permission, it still doesn't let you. So it's the DRM of the Windows Store is just really bad. Uh, and... When it comes down to it, if they got it onto Arc, I think it would succeed a lot more. But I think that Perfect World's probably figuring out also with Motiga, oh my god, this DRM is like ridiculous. Like, what is this DRM? Like, how do we get this out of the game without destroying it? And that's what I see going on there and why they're taking so long to do it. Because, and then also on top of that, the policy of, um, I heard a while back that Founders Packs don't carry over between the Windows version and the Arc version. There's like issues with crossplay there. So there's just a lot of issues going on with Gigantic that unfortunately probably will put it in its grave before it ever really gets into a stride. Jason, this was a title you were last year, or I should say two years ago now, you were following pretty closely. I mean, this was one that you were uh, personally interested in and then just then overwatch came out <laughs> all right <laughs> we'll go with that uh finally... no, that's really about it now and and this one's still going you know still i can't play because it's on windows 10 so yeah i mean that, that's about the extent of it it's just taking too damn long really. yep. it's a good game too it's so uh it irritates me when good games like that get screwed over so badly uh, All right, so I don't know how to take this last piece of rapid-fire news. This is coming from League of Legends. Uh, take the Draw is the player's name, I suppose? Yeah. Okay, Take the Draw. A, a League of Legends player who likes to play Nunu in a, a more of a support role as opposed to counter-jungling. Uh, so, fine. You want to play League of Legends in a different way? Go ahead. Play League of Legends in a different way. The, the problem with that is... You know, you may want to let your teammates know. Uh, I'm just just saying, you may want to let your teammates know, particularly when you are playing it in such a different role than is normally played or would be expected to be played by your teammates. So this player, Take the Draw, was playing Nunu in, in this support style and wasn't doing badly. Had a, a greater than one-to-one win ratio. It was over a 50% win ratio. Um, but... Ended up getting banned from the game for 14 days because he made the game, he or she, I I don't know if we know for sure gender, so we'll just say they, uh, made it frustrating and unfun for his teammates. Now, to be fair, Zach, take the draw was, you know, given a quick shout before the game started saying, I'm going to go do this, but then there was no communication from there. Um... So I guess there was no chance for the team to say, don't do that. We're going to go with this strategy. Please play it the way 
most people play it for this match. I, I don't know. Also, do we know, Jason, if this was in casual or was this in ranked play? Do we do we have any breakdown on that? Uh, if you go to Zach for a while, I'll take a look. Go for it, Zach. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really know specifically what that hero is necessarily for in terms of the lane and its particular role that is meta. Since he's much but, more frequently used as a strong counter jungler. So. Yeah, but what I will say is if they're going to like ranked or even in casual, if you're like high level and you're playing with people who want to sort of practice, I, I definitely understand why the person was banned. Uh, if they weren't playing to what sort of that particular character is meant to play as. I mean, it's kind of like um, taking like a, a tank in a particular game and trying to DPS with them instead of holding aggro. I mean, it, it really makes no sense, right? And yeah, you might say, oh, well, it's my freedom of choice to be able to do this. Well, not really. It's a, a privately owned game and there's sort of rules there and hints to tell you what you're supposed to do. Like if it's just like, a, oh, I didn't know that that was supposed to be a thing then I get it. But if you're basically ruining other players' experiences and forcing them to carry you because you're not playing the character right, even though it tells you exactly what you're supposed to do, then there's there's a problem there, I think. So, All right. So let me weigh in first with what uh, player support lead Wookie Cookie had to say on the issue. Uh, but wait, communication doesn't stop after you press the enter button on your keyboard. And that's where we saw a problem so you know yeah. it wasn't the, the player wasn't banned for the way they were playing it was for the communication right uh that's where we saw a problem in this particular case all of us need to be aware of the difference of communicating with someone versus communicating at someone telling your team what you're going to do and then ignoring them isn't really working with them it's holding them hostage telling your team what you want to do and actually working towards a common plan is a central part of playing any team-based game. Now, after a little while, as this kind of blew up on Reddit, Riot eventually did drop the ban early. So the Take the Draw didn't serve a full 14 days. But the question that raises, Jason, is a pretty obvious one. In a toxic community, as far as communication goes, you're going to lay down the line on the communication being poor? Um, while you still have a lot of toxic communication that players tend to get away with for long periods of time, I think, I, I just, I can understand players being frustrated, right? I get that. I would be too if I expected Zach to play this particular character in a certain way because that's the way I'm used to seeing it played. I would be appreciative if Zach had found a new successful strategy and wanted to roll with it and said, hey, let's try this. And there was some back and forth on, all right, well, I'm going to have to change the way I do things then because I, you won't be doing some of the things that I expected you to be doing. So we'll have to pick up the slack in those particular areas. Yes, I totally agree that there should have been more communication if you're going to try something way outside of the box. Presuming that this apparently, because it became an issue, is a bit more outside of the box than players were used to. However, when the game starts punishing you for just being bad at communicating, doesn't that leave a bad taste in your mouth, Jason? Yeah, it, it does. And I, I can't really say that I agree with this ban. But first of all, I do want to give a, a dub bomb to Jem and Zab on the uh, comments in the article. I would probably be proofread it because apparently I screwed up the headline. So fix that. If only I had an editor. No. Uh, hey, I don't edit your material. I know. I know. I'm supposed to be perfect. I get it. I because... get it. <laughs> you can't anyway, blame uh... me for that, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I I agree. For all the things you can ban someone for, just not talking well, even if you're doing some sort of odd strategy, especially if it works, if you're not terrible at it, I just I just don't think that should be the case. I think if you're if you're doing something different and it's not working over and over and over, then sure, then you probably should uh, get smacked down for it maybe. But if you're actually winning with it, even if it's not, because well the thing is there win, his win percentage was fifty three percent. If it had been seventy five percent. He still would have gotten reported because they could have won it eighty percent if he played it right. Mm. So uh, I don't know. That's, I, that's how I, I don't know. I think that's how it probably would have been, would have been. But yeah, no matter what, if you're if you're playing it a little differently from the usual, as long as you're doing something right, as long as you're not a total idiot about it, I don't think you should get. I don't think you should get banned for it. At the very least, they should look over what their complaints are about, see what those are, and if they are terrible, then then maybe you take action. But I just don't think he did anything wrong in this case. Zach, you're more on the side that the band was 
totally I, valid. I think, I, I think it was just because win rate is extremely. Uh, it's it's not really something that you can look at like, oh, well, he was winning, right? So it's it's completely fine. That's not the case because that uh, the other four other players could have been carrying him really really hard because of what he wasn't doing and. That's sort of what I look at. It's a MOBA. It's a team game. You have to be a team player. In this case, if he was just typing at the beginning of the game, I'm playing it this way, and just didn't really care what his team was saying, he deserves to be banned. What I mean, it? it's it's a form of trolling, in a sense, to not communicate with your team in that particular strategic way. Now, you sort of point out the toxicity within the League of Legends community, and I completely agree with that. It's a very toxic community, but a lot of that's just offensive language, insults, stuff like that. It's not really um, necessarily directly affecting the outcome or the possible outcome of a game and how hard everyone else has to work to carry someone. Um, if you say, you know, fuck you, you're terrible, that's different than saying, okay, I'm going to play a character a completely different way than how it's supposed to, and you guys all have to carry me because I want to be special. So. Wow. You two are like polar opposites on this one. <sighs> We could go on for another half hour, I'm sure. Yeah, but... I'm sure we could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it comes down to: Did we find out if it was casual play, ranked? No, play? I did we not find know. out. Because I think no, I that, of course, yeah. weighs into it too. You know, in, at least as an outsider, if it was casual, then screw it, do whatever the hell you want. Uh, if it, it should was ranked, just be a warning. But if it was I ranked mean... play, then I could certainly see some some potential issues there. Um, hmm. I'm going to stay out of this one. I, I can see both sides of the argument, and because I'm not a League of Legends aficionado, uh, a hardcore ranked player or anything, I can see both sides of this argument. I think 14 days is excessive. It probably should have resulted yeah. in a, hey, if you're going to do this, the communication needs to be more solid, and then gone from there. But let us know how you feel in the comments, because this apparently is has been a pretty big uh pretty big deal back and forth and it is interesting to see what riot will ban for and what won't sometimes i don't know uh before we head on over to the weekly bombs want to talk about a first look we put up for uh Feria. it's a i did a first look for it it's a a card game mixed with a evolving board game and some elements of like settlers of Catan and putting down your tiles and real-time strategy moving pieces around and yeah go check it out i did you guys have a chance to check this one out i expected going into the first look to be just oh god here we go yet another freaking card game uh I'll do an eight minute first look and just get it out the door so people can see it but i ended up playing the game for hours uh <laughs> before I, uh, or after I had finished the first look, uh, particularly for the puzzle mode. I really, really, really enjoyed the puzzle mode. It does kind of annoy me sometimes that in the decks you're playing through, you'll have to do a mission uh, in the middle of a puzzle, bunch of puzzles. Ah, just let me play the puzzles. Just let me play the puzzles. But I did enjoy the mission-based gameplay too. The, the, the deck customization is nice. Everything you expect to be there would be there. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by this one. It is different enough in this space. And yeah, it borrows from a bunch of other titles, just like all card games do. But I can appreciate it for some of the things that it does differently. And I would actually rate this like a 7 or an 8 uh, on my meter. I will play this again. I will absolutely play this some more. Uh, and that's odd for me in the card game space lately. What did you guys think? Jason, let's start with you since you're a, a Hearthstone fanatic. Yeah, it did look pretty good. I was I was kind of surprised too. I thought, oh, another... I was thinking something more along the lines of Duelist. Oh, hey, you just put mm -hmm. cards, they make a thing, you run around the board, whatever. But I do like how you create the, the world as it goes on. Now... Does it get more complex than that? You, can you make like multiple, like have, like you want to have forests and mountains in your deck as like multiple colors? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can create custom decks. Uh, in the game, in the first look, I gave the example because they also supply formulas as you level up to kind of help you build better decks of varying colors. But yes, you could build a custom deck and throw whatever you have in your collection in there and be playing with green, red. Uh, and okay. building a lot of mountains and a lot of forests on the game board as you go out. Yes. Yeah, it did look pretty interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get around to it, but I can definitely see it looks like a pretty decent quality game. I probably agree with like 7 or 8 out of 10 being uh, about what it's worth. Zach? 
Yeah, I, the first exposure I had to it was watching a Twitch stream um, by Crip a, a while ago. It's probably when they were like right into their alpha or pre-alpha even. Yeah, and I had checked it out for maybe half an hour during that and decided we're going to wait on the first look and waited until yeah. it went into open beta yesterday, I think it was. Yeah, and the the game looked interesting. I mean, I, I really like sort of the art style, what they're going for with it. And, but I haven't played it yet. I probably will eventually get into it, just because it does look a little bit more outside the box than what we're used to in the CCG genre. So I definitely give them props for that. So as far as my first impressions rating, as far as looking at it, not actually playing, I probably would put it in a 7 or 8 category as well with you guys. This one gets a thumbs up. Gets a thumbs up. If, you, if you're if you into yep. to games like uh, you know, Hearthstone or even more like board gamey type stuff, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, and you can get it on Steam. It's a real quick download. Don't don't worry about that one. Let's slide over to the Weekly Bombs. We'll start with mine since it's just on this same to topic. Dub Bomb to Faria's Puzzle Mode. I enjoy it quite a bit. It's uh, It starts off very easy, but not only are you playing through the puzzle modes trying to figure out these puzzles, they also, by proxy, Jason, teach you some very interesting strategies that mm -hmm. you could use in uh, your card deck building that maybe you wouldn't think of, you know, like buffing your, you know, generally you don't off the top of your head think about buffing your opponent. Uh, characters for your opponent's characters for a certain reason but in the puzzle modes they reveal little synergies like that as you go along where oh well if i buff them and then use this this would actually create a better situation for me even though i'm making a, a opponent's creature stronger so definitely worth the puzzle mode even if you're not generally into puzzles to learn some of those synergies between cards that maybe you wouldn't have stumbled across because you have, you know, 200 cards in your collection. So, dub bomb to the puzzle mode. Go ahead, Jason. I'm going to give a dub bomb to Armored Warfare. What? Not, not because, no, not because of the game. I haven't played that in months. And you, you know why. But but when I went when I went there for that for that trip a couple years ago, they gave me this really sweet backpack. Let's see if I can <laughs> see the Armored Warfare logo there. Really nice. good. Lots of pockets, are lots you, of space. Are, I, you, I, are you holding anything up? It looks invisible. Oh, is it camoed? Is it camoed? Is that what's going on? Oh, it's on? Uh, uh, funny, funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like walk to the grocery store. I carry loads of groceries in here when I come back. Really good. People people have actually asked me because they've seen this. They'd be like, were you in the military? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I just play a stupid tank game. So yeah, dump bomb to my Armored Warfare backpack. Very good. Fair enough. Zach? I'm going to give an A-bomb to the $60 lightsaber <laughs> and sword tour. Uh, I just think it's really, really stupid. Like, I get, like, okay, well, you're Garrett seeing, you know, the item. So if you just want to outright purchase it instead of do lock boxes, it's great. But $60, really, that just exposes how unlikely you are to get that lightsaber and that lock box if that's how they value it. So definitely A-bomb to that. If it was $30, I wouldn't even no. care. I'd be like, okay, no. that's fine. $30, no, that's stupid, too. Um, Larry it's still RDS stupid, screen. but it's like, okay, well, all right. That's stupid, too. Uh, from the viewers, the Grumpy says, The Secret World Combat revamp sounds interesting, and a free-to-play model finally. Looking forward to seeing more of this. So are we, Grumpy. So are we. Go ahead, Jason. Deathlock says, I must give an A-bomb to Revelation Online also. Not because the game sucks, but the laziness of the team that was in charge of the localization. The only thing they did was get rid of the Russian language. Like, really? They had three closed betas. What did they do that whole time? Right? <laughs> it's still in Chinese. Have you still played it? Uh, oh, yeah. It's, there's still there's still some stuff that's not translated. And cool. systems that aren't even in the game, yet there's quests for them. So. <laughs> Full disclosure, I uninstalled it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. Uh, Hellsworth says, A bomb to websites being bought by game companies. I removed MMO games from my bookmarks. If I want the perspective of a company about their own game, I visit the game's website. And if I want other people's perspective, I visit new websites and forums. But most of all, I do not want or care for a company's perspective about other games. Yeah, this one was kind of weird, right? Yeah. Like, I understand, it you know, it's good for MMO games. I understand that Gamigo thinks that it's, you know, good for them to be expanding their portfolio. But it all, like, that type of purchase automatically, even if they have drawn up an agreement that, you know, Gamigo is not going to interfere with content in any way, shape, or form, and blah, 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 it... 
it just automatically raises the specter of conflict of interest, doesn't it, Jason? The only way I could sort of be kind of okay with it is if it was a specialized website for a particular game, like if uh, like if Blizzard bought Hearthhead or Wowhead or something like that. Yeah. Then yeah, at yeah, least yeah. you know yeah, exactly. they're going to give them the the scoop for their stuff. So you understand that could be really super critical. But at least they're not. They're not reporting on, you know, Swotor and saying, oh, this sucks. Go play Blizzard games instead, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's just, yeah. It's just yeah, weird. And, I mean, I wish them luck and, and hope it goes well for them, you know? Uh, but, yeah, it's just, it's kind of weird from an outsider perspective seeing a purchase like that. Yeah, the only way I'd be fine with is if they put right on the top banner that it's owned by said company because yeah. that would be the only way they could really fully disclose their possible bias. So. Yeah, and, and I'm obviously we are not accusing MMO games of any impropriety in content or misleading content or anything like that. Uh, we have no idea what that partnership entails. We don't know their contracts. We don't know the rules that the two parties have agreed to or anything like that. The only thing we're saying here is the same thing our, our viewer said is that kind of looks weird. That yep. kind of looks weird. Uh, the doggy v 72 says some of my best streams were playing the secret world I would play with chat that have never experienced the game before solving puzzles together and spending hours on a simple quest was freaking awesome No other game has ever offered that the secret world definitely holds a place in my heart despite its flaws I agree. I agree. Go ahead, Jason. We got a I'd newbie. Be afraid. I'd, I'd be afraid to play on a on stream just because people would immediately the wikipedia the quest and stick it in chat <laughs> <laughs> no i wanted to figure this out all right kiz says first time give you bombs here so here we go thank you kids welcome, welcome to the kiz. show yeah. welcome do you have the applause uh, i do not setup? it's close <laughs> you should you totally should uh a bomb to frontier for wanting money in order to get access to a temporary beta which would become open to everyone in something like a month i assume uh that's frontier the uh elite dangerous guys Probably, yeah. Probably? Okay. Uh, the bomb. I, it's kids, kids, it's, it's a duh bomb, not the bomb. Okay? I know you're new here. We're just going to try to teach you. Okay? <laughs> the bomb, he says. To you guys for everything that you do. Keep up the good work. Also, a quick question for you guys since I recently started playing Elite Dangerous. It reminded me of another free-to-play game which was extremely similar to it but sadly got shut down. So my question is, do you guys remember the game by any chance? Uh. Also suggested for top five category stuff, top five games that should not have been shut down. That's an oh, interesting God. topic, yeah. Uh, I, I remember imagery of it, and I, I read this comment before, um, like a couple days ago, and I was going to look it up what game it was, but I, I forgot to look it up. It's not a mm. star conflict, is it? Possibly. Is that, shut down? Down? Is it? Is that shut down? I don't know. There was... Star conflict still going. There was another one that was like space, and you would add like different missions and stuff to do in the the space, and I, I, it's just. All right, we'll give it to the, the viewers. Name. Help our uh, help Kiz out. Kiz brought the bombs for the first time ever. If you know what game Kiz is talking about, I don't off the top of my head there, and I think Star yeah. Conflict is still running. So if, if yeah. it is shut down, it's not that one. Uh, also, I do like that top five suggestion. Top games that. Should not have shut down, but did. EverQuest next. Um, City of Heroes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Go ahead, Zach. Xanador says, combat improvements for my favorite online game? New players keeping it alive? Great news. It can be. We're going to have to see how it plays out. This is surprisingly True. a lot of hype for a game as, as old as that and as niche as that one is. Uh, Ignat Adrian says, early January for the question of the week, you guys asked what's our most anticipated free-to-play game for 2017. My answer was Fortnite, if only they would decide to launch this year. Well, now I have to give Epic Games a dub bomb because Tim Sweeney recently stated that they do plan to launch this year. Glad to hear this. Dub bomb to Epic Games and Fortnite. Absolutely. We were surprised to see that too. Kind of came off the cuff. In a comment at what GDC, I think it was. Yeah. And then Epic Games confirmed after it was said that yeah, it is going to come out. Yeah, he, yeah. he was right. Uh, so yeah, we're pretty we're pretty excited about that too. I know Fortnite is another one that Jason's been watching for for quite some mm -hmm. time now. Go ahead. By the way, I I think Jason was right about Black Prophecy being at the space game. I yeah, maybe up. Black Prophecy. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Kids, let us know. Take a take a look at Black Prophecy. Let us know if we uh, if we nailed it or not. Uh, right. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Nom Nom Kitty says, "Lol was gifted Secret World but never touched it. 
But it's too late now with the other MMOs coming out and that are available and probably never will. I don't know. I always found games like that much like reaching into the bottom of the barrel at a flea market. Wow. All the good stuff is gone. Yeah. All the good stuff is gone now, and this is what's left. In my personal opinion, it shouldn't compromise with your free time. So when they say it's not the best, but it does what it's supposed to do, kind of makes it seem like a straight-to-DVD movie, so to speak. But that's just me. But who am I? But just a cat that likes video games and nom-noms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to say, though, I have to admit that when a game comes out, and especially I'm finding this, when MMO first comes out, it can be really sucky, and it takes maybe a couple years for it to really find its mark and be pretty good. Like, like you know, I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV now, and I wasn't that interested in it when it first came out. Yeah. Uh, I did Star Trek Online when it first came out. Didn't like it. Hopped in a couple years later. Saw a lot of things they changed. Liked it a lot more. So, you know, Secret World could be the same way. Even though it's almost, what, four or five years old now? You know, maybe it lacked a lot of the stuff you liked before, and it's got it now. We talked about that with Elder Scrolls Online a couple weeks ago. So Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't think I would ever describe the Secret World as not the best, but doing what it's supposed to do, though. I, I would describe Secret World as I love every aspect of that game, but your combat sucks. You know, <laughs> fix, much. fix your combat. I, I wouldn't put it in that category of, eh, it does what it's supposed to. At least for me, I although I'm heavily invested in its uh, atmosphere and story and, and all that stuff. So I could, I could see where you're coming from, Nom Nom. Enjoy those Nom Noms. Uh, question of the week last week. Last week we talked about what sends you running from an MMORPG. So this week we wanted to ask what's a feature or item that an upcoming game can advertise that will be sure, will make you, uh, that you will be sure to check out the game as soon as you get a chance. Zach, what's yours? Um, what upcoming game that no, I would no, no. want to what, check out? What, no, what feature or oh, feature. something could okay. a game advertise that basically guarantees you're going to check it out as soon as you get a chance to? Probably action combat that actually looks fluid. Um, and also sandboxy elements as well. Those typically draw me in. Jason? Uh, probably some combination of either non-traditional questing or hor and or horizontal leveling. Uh, horror themes for me, or the uh, name Final Fantasy. Uh, Dark Heart <laughs> says, "Question of the week." Need a Final Fantasy horror game. Oh my god! Be like here. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I think I just had another Fifty Shades of MMO moment. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> Dark Heart says, "Question of the week." Dark Souls combat walks out. That'd be pretty sweet, actually. That that'd be a investment. Although. Didn't we kind of see that, with, or at least an attempt with Wizardry Online, and that did not do well. That yep. did not do well. Granted, the combat wasn't as smooth, but it was in that vein. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Also looks like it was made in like 1997. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, Deathlocks, this question of the week. I love MMOs that allow me to choose what role I want to play in whatever class I play. Take ESO, for example. I'm a sorceress, yet I have heavy armor and also dual wield. But if I want, I can literally play whatever I want. I can never be locked into one class. I think Final Fantasy XIV does this, though I'm not sure. I haven't played in a while. Yeah, that does really lock you into one class. But I sort of get that you have to play as that thing. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna be a sword and shield guy, or you're gonna be a rogue caster guy. But yeah, you know. I think the the best way to describe it on the Final Fantasy side is if you're gonna be a black mage, you are a black mage. You are wearing as uh, the robes and the staff and everything. But your character can at any time swap to any other class if you get bored so it's not sure. i wouldn't say it's quite as open as the elder scrolls online example that deathlock gives you just have the versatility of not having to create alts to jump over to a different class however you do have to level them so yeah uh, uh, you know pick one go ahead zach heavy armor is weird though i understand dual wielding um in terms of eso but heavy armor that's weird um, Elusive X Treasure says, first of all, I'm super excited for all the Secret World news. For the question of the week, customization. If I can spend hours with a calculator tool theory crafting and toying with builds to find exactly what I want to do, then it's all for me. I don't care about being the absolute optimum build, but I want the option to play around and find what's fun. It's why Rift and The Secret World are among the games that I always come back to. Secondarily, if the game doesn't have that, but does have the unique classes, i.e. Allods, um, Sionists. Sionists, yeah, Sionists, Sionists. or uh, Perfect World Entertainment's Venomancer, then it's a good chance it's going to get me to stick around for at least a little while. Uh, there's yes. a PS there. Oh, PS. Slaps Magic Man on the wrist. No, no, bad. <laughs> 
No terrible movie references in relation to my comments. <laughs> it's not my fault Elusive X Treasure has started me on the path to writing what is going to be the next big novel, Fifty Shades <sighs> oh, of MMO. No royalties. Sorry. Featuring all the worst MMOs, because that's the only way you could torture yourself. Inimicus Solitus says, question of the week. First thing to make me check out an MMO, deep, old school gameplay. New games are so shallow it gets boring fast. I need a game to be deep and engaging for months slash years. Well, that is a small list of games that you'll be playing, but you'll be playing them forever. So but it won't playing matter. For a while, yeah, so, so it won't go. matter. <laughs> it won't matter. Go ahead, Jason. Ian Tweedale says the features that guarantee the features that guarantees I'll check out an MMO three or more faction realm versus realm. Well, that's that list is even smaller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it gets big. It's it's been growing. Yeah, we're, well, we're seeing it come back. Although we're also seeing yeah. other games that did it well, shut it down come back too. So, yeah. go ahead, Zach. I'm going to butcher this. Um, Excel Kobayashi says, question of the week, action combat on a scale of Vindictus. Now, I liter now it literally any game other than Vindictus ever did that and actually had a good questing system, dot, dot, dot. What were you worried about Bushering there? Uh, Kobayashi? His name. Yeah, his name, you, just in you, general. You, you have Star Trek, right? Yeah, no kidding, man. Star eh, Trek. Not Star Trek. I, I, I was never into Star Trek. I'm sorry. <sighs> That's fine. Star Wars. Well, you're one Star of those. Wars. You could be into both. You know that, right? I, like, I like know, Star Wars. I know. Have I was never into it though. Names. You, you could uh, be into both. It's allowed. It's allowed. I know. It's allowed. Uh, know. Reverend Namtub says, for the question of the week, if an upcoming game were to say we're PVE focused, no PvP, it grabs my attention because usually it's the other way around. Come play our PvP gank box. Lose all your stuff to a PKer while you were out mining, noob. So, of course, I love Warframe and how they emphasized back during the closed slash early beta days how they were strictly PvE. Though PvP was added later just for those who want to dominate someone at something. I remember when Steve Sinclair from Digital Stream rolled his eyes at the idea of esports for Warframe during an interview. <laughs> I made this PVE Care Bear. It made this PVE Care Bear feel all warm and fuzzy. I I agree with you, Reverend, uh, on that. Not that I'm uh, opposed to PVP, but I think there's games like Final Fantasy XIV. The the it's great PVE content, and the PVP is just like so lackluster that it's just like not every game has to have everything. Yeah. Uh, question of the week next week. What is the worst name you've ever seen for a free-to-play game? Or hell, just a game in general. Whether it's MMO, free-to-play or not. What is the worst name for a game ever? Oh, I was just thinking about this. I just saw it. Saw it was reminded of a game today. Like, yeah. <laughs> Tell us the worst name you've ever seen and why in the comments below. I know if Q was here, she'd say Warface right away she <laughs> hates the name warface for a game q oh, will be back by the way somebody uh, some people were asking about her you know, not being on the shows for a while she's in the process of shuffling some moving around to uh, a final location again so as soon as she's done of course she'll be back but there's her answer for you warface put your answers in the comments below make sure to put your weekly bombs dub bomb for something awesome a bomb for something terrible in the world of free-to-play gaming or in the world in general and if you have questions for the viewer or for the hosts throw it down there we'll answer it as best we can until next week zach where can everybody find you eric can find me on twitter at zach sharps mr jason winter you can find me on Twitter at Winter Informal. My streams are twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. Hellsworth, I am still playing through Tomb Raider. You can still catch me. <laughs> As you kill more Laras. Yeah. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. You can follow me on Twitter at Magic Man 1, M A G I C K M A N N 1. Of course, while you're there, follow at MMO Bomb so you are kept apprised of all the new articles, videos, editorials, interviews, giveaways, and more that we post to the site on a daily basis. Until next week, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. <laughs>